I think this series began, uh, what ignited it was one day I was watching the news and I saw a, um, there was a flood somewhere, I forget where it was, but it had flooded this uh, particular area in the forest and there was a helicopter getting footage of the different areas and it had zeroed in on a, um, on a deer which was traveling along its path and it had come to all this water and the deer was walking in circles because suddenly he didn't know which way to go because every day he knew to go down that path that was his his environment that was his nature it's all he knew and suddenly this this chopper was had this footage of him just kind of walking in circles because it didn't know to go back all it knew was to go forward and that kind of it didn't inspire me it just kind of made me kind of sad and I started to think about man and, and, and our role because that flood was caused by um, a dam that had broke and um, so that evening I, I painted a, a painting of a, of a rabbit on a little planet and uh, I was just thinking more about how how small this planet is we live on and how they don't know the size of it they don't know what's what's next they just know this little area that they that they circle and that they live on and that's that's their uh that's their home the bear came from i had had a couple of dreams about bears and i wasn't quite sure why that was occurring and i wasn't I would just been, I was just, I just walked with the bears in these particular two dreams I had. And I kept wondering why was I walking with these bears? And we we're walking along uh, railroad tracks. And um, I hadn't really set off, you know, to do a series about bears, but the next day I did a small painting of a, of a bear on fire. And I'm not sure why I did that, and I still don't know why that happened, and I kind of put the painting away. And I won't sell the painting, but um, the painting kind of disturbed me. And uh, again, that was the same. I was feeling the same way as I did when I had that, the feeling when I saw that deer walking in circles, the confused deer. And uh, the ignited bear was sort of symbolizing not knowing, not knowing when they're, when they're in, in danger or not, not, not particularly in danger themselves, but what's, what's coming, you know, environmentally, what, what, what's occurring and what they don't know is around the corner. And so when I started painting more bears, these bears started to symbolize uh, me as, as an artist. And, uh, and that wasn't, I didn't particularly each time I paint a bear in a painting, I don't think, okay, this is me. What did I do today? What am I doing tomorrow? How am I feeling? It just, it just is. And I just have this feeling. And then also other people, as you, as you work enough and you paint enough of these paintings, people start to say, I think you're the bear. And I think this is what's happening. So, and it's their vision. And then these visions become a little obscured. And I start to kind of feel that way. And when I look at a bear, in some of these pieces, I just start to feel a certain way, and I, you know, I know how that bear feels. I think it relates to my work in a way, in the sense that if that's what people see, then that's how it relates. With art, it kind of, at some point, it comes. It, it, it's not in your hands anymore. I paint the piece, and when it's done, I'm, I'm going to move on to the next piece. And if someone comes in and they see that and they feel that, and they want to believe that and they have that relationship to it and um, maybe they're from the bear clan and maybe they have a particular relationship with it then then that's what it is that's what the painting becomes i had a girl come in and she was having uh, nightmares about bears all her life since she was a little kid and um, she wanted to face that fear she was having and kind of deal with it and so she asked me to draw a bear and then she had it tattooed on her arm. So every time she woke up, she would see that bear in, in reality, you know, in real life and, and be able to face it every day. 
So the bear becomes whatever you need it to be. I no longer think about the environment. The environment is just a part of it now. This, the, uh, the tragedy of the environment is now a part. I think we're all the environment. We're always consciously thinking now about the environment. And I think we've all become environmentalists one way or the other, whether it's just throwing a can into a recycling depot or you know, going out and being a part of a bigger picture and, and, and going out of our way to get spread the word about environmentalism. And so with these works, you know, what they became and where they went, it was, you know, it's, that's what, that's what they could be. But I don't necessarily think that that's what I set out for them to, you know, evolve into. They just are now. You know, one of the things that, a, a, a constant kind of theme that occurs now is floods. And um, within a lot of the pieces, there's, there's waves and there's this encroaching kind of intensity. And, and, and I think I tried to, um, that just came from what's occurring. Every time we turn the news now, we see a flood. We see people standing on houses. We see people drowning. We see things getting swept away. And, um, and that, that's, what's, that's what's happening all around us. And that just slowly just started coming in. And then now it's kind of playing a major role. It's another character in the pieces. It's not so much uh, painting a, a landscape. It's, 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 just, it's another theme. It's another, it's another portrait within the, within the work. The pieces have gotten a little dark and I'm not really sure. It's, it's, again, it's the subject matter. You know, when you're dealing with deep water, there's, there's darkness there. You're dealing with brooding uh, situations and subjects, there's a darkness there. And I always try to find the light. If you look at any of these pieces, there's a glimmer of light, whether it's from a sun coming in from, you know, the west, or it's like a light that's on in someone's house, or it's the glow of a TV, or if it's the headlights, there's always a light. But not necessarily in the way that I used to paint when I was painting portraits. It was full of light, and it was full of colors, and it was full of, it was glowing in different ways and um, I saw that recently when I was going through some of uh, my old works I saw that light again and I saw that that color and it inspired me and I was thinking you know why isn't there more light I mean, with each of these pieces as dark as they are I'm using the brightest colors to create those dark tones and so at some point when I'm painting I do see that light that light is there and that color is there in the end though it becomes something else I need that light to create the dark and that's what I, I see it in the end I see it throughout the process but the viewer might see darkness in the end and that's just that's just how it how that's just the act of painting what inspires me a lot of uh, you know these days is, is living in the city and being able to go to the galleries and see new work and, uh, and see a lot of work see a lot of different art uh, whether it's going to the small independent galleries or going to, say, the AGO and seeing the old masters. Um, but I think you have to kind of leave that inspiration. That, that kind of, that gets to you, and that's great, and that might make you feel different things and happy and maybe glad that you're an artist. But then uh, when you get back to your studio, you're going to have to leave that behind. So what I think, it's not what inspires me, but I think it's what distracts me, that... Um, that I bring back. So whether it's walking down the street, uh, sun comes out of the clouds, hits a person in the face just right, or um, you know, a group of homeless people yelling on the corner, it's what kind of is there that I kind of think when I sit down from the easel, it's like remember that thing that I saw today, or that person, or the way that the way that sounded. How could I put that down here? And so with each work, as, as when you're working on a series, the series is all under kind of one umbrella, but you, they, you, I deal with them all differently. So the waves in one piece might be painted this way, but another piece, they, they change because you're not thinking about them the same way. And so, and then when I'm in Rama, it's very different. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a quietness there. 
and then you have to kind of inspire yourself to wake up and to start to keep working. I think just waking up in that quietness, in that environment, looking at the window and seeing trees, hearing a bird, um, that's inspiring. And so as an artist, you have to kind of create that for yourself and just go up and stand in front of the easel, stand in front of the canvas and uh, look down at your paint and uh, kind of be glad that you're in that position to do that. And, uh, and then you get your brush and you start painting. And then I think that's, that's inspiring. <laughs>